All right, all right. Family and friends, welcome to the Revolution of One live stream. After some technical difficulties today, we are finally getting started. It's 12.30, we usually get going at noon. But I'm glad I listened to some Dr. Kevin Elko while I was preparing for this live stream because one of the things that he talked about uh, with his concept of language of winning is one of his favorite phrases is, so what, now what? Sometimes in life, there are inconvenient things that happen. There are annoying things that happen and an empowering attitude to adopt towards those things is captured in that phrase. So what? Things like this happen to everybody. Now what? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do to make things work? And we just spent the last 30 minutes getting a chance to live out the so what, now what? Um, so we over here practicing what we preach, y'all. We over here practicing what we preach. I want to start off with a clip, uh, give you a preview of today's guest, and we're going to dive right in as Kamau and I pick the brains of a, of a uh, nationally renowned champion. I talk about how winning teams and winning people, winning companies, winning organizations have their own language. There's a language of victory. And we talk to ourselves in these ways, and we talk to ourselves with this language, we tend to win. Quit talking about your feelings. I feel like quitting. I feel like stopping. Greatness comes with, I decided. I'm gonna decide I'm gonna enjoy every day. I'm gonna decide I'm gonna enjoy life. I wanna decide right now that this will be the best year of my life. These will be the best years. Frequently what I do is I talk to teams, get them ready for big games. That's where I've gotten some of these rings. And I teach them really how to talk to themselves. Worked a lot with Nick Foles and taught him how to be bold. And I basically coach coaches. I've coached leaders and coach people on how to be champions. Today's guest is an inspirational speaker, a sports psychologist, and if you thought Michael Jordan had a lot of rings, you got to get ready to meet Dr. Kevin because this man, Super Bowl titles, NCAA titles, he's got to combine 30 rings. He's worked with teams like Texas A&M, Alabama, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New York Jets, helping competitors become champions. Today, he's going to talk about what it takes to have the winning mindset and how to adopt the language of winning. Please welcome Dr. Kevin Elko. Doctor, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, T. K. Okay, you did a good job opening up. You shouldn't have mentioned them Jets, though. You shouldn't have brought that up. They was with you till you went there. God, thank you. What a, you're an inspiration. The only thing to go, look, man, Michael got all them rings, bro, but I can't, even, I can't even jump and get the net. So that's a whole different ball game. I can't, I can't. I'm up there trying to get that net. I can't even get that. So he did it with, he did it with everything. But I appreciate the kind things you said about me. Yeah, well, hey, I'm not going to let you mention Michael Jordan without starting off with a basketball question. You've worked with so many athletes. Before we dive into anything about success, I want to know what's your take on Jordan versus LeBron? Well, LeBron, you know, a lot of people do that, TK, like do that analogy. But what we have to talk about LeBron is his legacy isn't done. And what they used to say was Jordan brings everybody's level up. Well, I think so does so, you know, so does LeBron. He does the same thing. So I think it's early for the comparison. There was something completely different. Let me tell you what's different about Jordan. And I think LeBron is moving into that area. Jordan used to look at everybody because Ray, I saw Ray Lewis just because I used to be at the University of Miami. And Jordan used to go match my intensity. And everybody would come up to his intensity. They would come up to his level. He would say it and they would do it. And I think we're starting to see the same thing with LeBron that he's bringing people up like that as his career has gone on. And I think he's learned that. And I think take him, take in LeBron because like Michael, it'd be something that, you know, this is a, this is something you don't see that often, but I think he's coming into almost the same era, like you said, and I thought the same thing, you know, I think Kobe did the same thing. And I think they're getting to be, it's going to be pretty close. And I think he's getting it. So I think it's early for the comparison. So I, um, I like how Jordan brought everybody up. I liked how Jordan just wouldn't refuse to do anything but be there. And I think LeBron's getting there. Doctor, I just saw this clip the other day where the Bulls were getting ready to play. I forget who the team was, but somebody was was warning Jordan that this team is not really to be play, you know, taken lightly. He said they just they just shut down Shaq. He was like, Do you know how hard that is to shut down Shaq? Jordan said, I'm not Shaq. And they said, I know, yeah. but do you know how hard it is to neutralize him? Jordan said, that ain't the point. I'm not Shaq. That kind of mentality, that killer instinct, 
What does it take to have that? And why is that so rare these days? Our, our brains, TK, our brains, uh, are, their neurons are fired together, wired together. They wire really easily if you could do something repetitively. And what Michael did, if you look at his career all the way back to his stories in high school, he chose faith. He chose to believe in him until it got to a point where it was a natural thing where he said, this is who I am. This is what I am. And he would even naturally challenge himself. So early on in his career, when something happened to him and they said, you're not a starter, you're not going to make this team. He never allowed that to define him. He defined him. You got to catch that. He didn't let the world define him. He did. And so when they said that, they were saying, hey, let me define you. Shaq didn't do this. Shaq didn't do well, so you're not. He was saying at that at that point, you're not going to define me. I'm going to define me. And for years, what I did when I was with the Steelers, I would do this self-concept scale. Great ones see themselves there. Not arrogance. They see themselves have gifts. And then they go and act that out. And so the worst thing you could do he got away from is comparison. He got away from it. What the Apostle Paul say? Comparison. Don't say you're not wise. Don't compare yourself. Just say who I am uniquely. Martin Luther King said it best. Some of us are Cadillacs. Some of us are Fords. You come to grip with being a Ford, you get a park and place Cadillac never get into. What he was saying is be you, be unique, be that Ford, but I ain't Shaq. And he refused to do the comparison. And that's what will erode your self-concept. That's what erode your faith. He just chose it. Hey, you did it in my opening video, TK. Faith is a choice. And he just decided to choose it. Mm. All right, let's talk about what does it mean to be a winner? I have so many people who, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going, I like it. Your help set up my answer, keep going. Yeah, well, so many people are debating the possibility of even defining that term, right? There's a lot of talk right now about hustle culture and some people being like, it takes hustle to succeed. You got to be willing to push yourself and challenge yourself. But then there's a lot of talk about, no, you got to be willing to love yourself as you are. And everything isn't about hustle. I want to know from you, having worked with so many people that are embraced as winners, what does it mean to be a winner? We're doing this right now at Alabama with our football team. The Greyhound, TK. That, that Greyhound will chase that rabbit if it's hungry. It will chase that rabbit if it's hungry. If that, if the greyhound eats, he's not gonna chase that greyhound. But you walk, the lion can eat Monday, the lion can eat Tuesday. You walk in front of that lion on Wednesday, it's gonna tear your butt up. Cause it's his DNA. Had nothing to do with hunger. The, the champion, it don't matter what you say. It don't matter what's outside. It's their DNA. Gotta go, gotta win, gotta go after it. And they've done it so many times. So this language of winning, when you do it over and over and over, it gets down in your DNA when you do it over and over. So, okay, Alabama comes out the first game. They play good the first two quarters against Missouri. But they don't the next two after that, the Greyhound. So they said, wait a minute, we're going up on this next game. You got to eat the whole game. They became the lion. Here's the difference. The Greyhound runs by its feelings. The line, it's his DNA, it's a choice. I choose it every day till it becomes my DNA. So what's my DNA? Mm. I hunt no matter what. And no matter who you go against, you hunt and you keep bringing the pressure. That's what I just keep on bringing it. Nolan Richardson with with that Arkansas team, 40 minutes of hell, I just bring it all the time. It's my DNA, it's who I am. And if you do something over and over and over, it gets tattooed in you. You hate, go to hate for a little while. It be your DNA. You'll be DNA program as a hater, but you do it over and over again. You can you can love people. It's the exact same thing. If I keep on doing this and competing and challenging me, it ain't from outside. It's my DNA. So I do it over and over and over. It keeps me going. It keeps me hungry. It keeps me relentless. And so, I, you know, what I used to teach, I used to work with boxers out at Olympic Committee. I'd work with some boxers out there. The great boxers come in and, oh, watch, man, don't let them hands dazzle you, man. Don't get hypnotized. But with them great boxers come in, they cut you, then they work the cut. They keep going. That's what the champ does. They keep going. It's in their DNA. And so mm-hmm. the difference is, yeah, you can love yourself, but what I'm not going to do is become like Gandhi, like I'm cool with everything. So here's, here's, here's the winner. Here's the champ's creed. Are you ready? 
is what you just brought up, TK. Here, this, this will bring you peace of mind. Well, let me just accept what I can't change. That'll bring you peace of mind. That's good. Them champions, they ain't got no peace. You know what the champ says? They don't say, let me accept what I can't change. They say, let me change what I can't accept. It's a different mindset. They ain't sitting around peaceful. When they did that documentary on Jordan, did, did, did Cowboy look peaceful to you? I'm down there with Nick Saban, man. I walk in and say, Coach, what you want me to say to the team? How in the blank do I know? If I knew what the blank to say, I would have said, <laughs> roll tide. Right? They ain't peaceful. They're restless, such and such. They're restless. Because their motto isn't, well, let me just accept what I can't change. Uh-uh, I'm going to change what I can't accept. And quite frankly, we can use a little bit of that in our country right now, can't we? I ain't, accept, I ain't accepting what's going on right now. I'm going to go out and use my heart and change it. That's what a champion does. That's how they think. It's different. There ain't no peace in them. Look, peace and mental health can be overrated. Oh, yeah, you peace, bro, but you look boring to me. You a peace, but you ain't making no difference. Bring some back restlessness. Bring me that lion. Now you guys got me fired up. I'm going to get good in a minute. I'm going to get good up in here in a minute. Now y'all got me fired up on that. Doc, I, I got a question for you. You know, when you look at athletes and you look at, you know, people who have these incredible stories where they just came from the bottoms and, you know, through the trials and tribulation, they've rose to this person. And I think when you kind of when you're born into like a middle class family or you're born into a situation where you, you didn't have to fight like that, you didn't have to struggle, um, you know, you weren't born in a third world country. You know, how can you essentially create adversity for yourself to to channel that into accomplishments, right? You see, you see these success stories, you see the the circumstances they came from. How do great ones channel that adversity into accomplishments? I your your really good question had the answer in it. They create the adversity. They'll create it. They'll create the outcome. And what they'll do is they'll um you know, a lot of what is a motivator for us is we don't want to have regret and they'll create that. Like I remember what I was watching the deal with Jordan and he, he said one guy hit a, a jumper against him and said, nice game. So like Jordan made up that that guy said it but to him, but the guy really never said it. But he did that to challenge himself. I think we create situations at time to motivate us. We create them. And but that being said, the statistics when we did them last time i did it with the steelers almost eight out of ten maybe higher the athletes in the nfl from broken homes and it's what you mm -hmm. just said they learn how to have resiliency from fighting through it they picked it up and so when they've gone through those certain things they learn so what now what they learn to believe in themselves when you go through certain situations it will either tank you and you could say oh you know what man I, I i'm no good you know what they said about me is right Malcolm Godwell, the author, did research on successful small businesses in New York City. You know the number one factor he found? Dyslexia. Dyslexia means I have trouble reading. And he found out yeah. that those people who had dyslexia learn how to over-communicate verbally and mm -hmm. work harder. Two things you need for a small business. So a lot of these great ones are from the same environment, the ones who spiraled down, but they took it, chose to believe in themselves, and what they learned from coming up out of that they used to become a champion. And so they've gone and used what they've learned earlier. They chose to believe themselves, chose, chose to learn how to work harder and chose to learn how to interact with people. And so they come from that and picked up skills from it and it catapulted them. Hmm. But I do Doc, think sometimes they do create it. I, I yeah, think I, and, right. and I was gonna say that, I think in, in some regard we have to right uh, again if, if you don't if, if your parents were fortunate enough to give you ideal circumstances um i i think you kind of lose that edge you, you know you, you didn't have to cultivate that you you came up in a very nurturing and and you know you could even say softer environment that wasn't as harsh and as cruel and and i think you know a lot of times i, I don't think people know how to create that adversity for themselves the philosopher Sartre said something that kind of blows people away. They said, and this is kind of a harsh statement. He goes, the best thing a father can do for his child is die early. And what is he talking about? Well, that child learns how coming from that environment, take care of themselves, be responsible. And the fact that they're finding today behind success is resiliency, 
my ability to come back from a setback. And so I have a phrase on my wall, when I fall, who I become will catch me. I'm going to become more. And I think that if you don't come from that, I think that's what you see times out on the court. You say, what, what's that athlete doing? He's, he's trash talking. He's making up these scenarios. Well, they're really doing what you're saying. They're creating the adversity because, you know, environmentally, genetically, we're made to warrior. We're, we're about a thousand years back. So we create these artificial environments to get ourselves going, to go and compete at times. And so I think we do create that at some time. It's an interesting uh, question, an interesting concept. And you watch people get creative in how they do it. Definitely. I had, I had a, one more kind of follow up question. You know, I, I hear a lot of people talk about goals and, you know, a lot of self-help gurus, a lot of motivational speakers are really um, adamant about setting goals. But then, you know, I le uh, meet a lot of people <clears throat> in in maybe the work environment or friends of mine or colleagues who aren't 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 having success with setting goals, um, essentially. Like they'll set a goal, but then circumstances will change. Maybe their their interests will change, um, and the goal isn't even relevant to them. The goal that they once set isn't even relevant to them anymore. So I'm kind of curious. To, what is your take on goals? How do you approach goal setting? Is that even something you believe in? I do, but I'll tell you what I like a little different. I like the 90 day goal for what you just said. You set a goal this year, January 1st. You hit March 31st. It was obsolete. The world is moving faster now than it ever has. It may never go to slow again. I like 90 days. Like I like setting it now for the end of the year. And, but what I like about goals is more what I'm going to say next, nitty gritty goals, my daily goals. I get a notebook and I write them up and I put on a box in my notebook, W-I-N, what's important now? What's important today? And then I write out, here's the things I'm going to do priority wise and I stay on them and I don't come off of it. And so what I do like better is what's called day, daily nitty gritty goals. There's a guy named Andy Grove and he was in Intel and he started something. It, it's to your point. I mean, you're talking my language. He started something called OKRs, objectives with key results. For example, I think YouTube's objectives like a billion, a billion hours a day watched. And then it came down with key results. And the key result was here's how many hours in um, be watched doing gaming. Here's how many hours it watch every day doing music. The only problem I don't like about that is what you just said. You get caught in the results. I'm a process guy. I like something different, goals with measurable activities. Here's what I'm going to do today. For example, I want to be healthy. I want to go see my kids. You know, I want to go to my kid's wedding man, so I can do a little cabbage patch. You know, <laughs> man, man, let, me, let me make an announcement before I go on on behalf of the AARP. I can still drop it like it's hot. I can't pick it up anymore. So anyway, I go out for me to be able to have a healthy body. I got to do goals with measurable activities. So I go to Cleveland Clinic. I go, man, I'll be around, see my kids. They say, you got to run sprints every day. Hit training. I do it. And you got to meditate every day. I do it. So I, the, I'm, I, my goal is a healthy body, but I don't say, here's where my weight's going to be. Here's where this going to be. I go and do the daily. And then the other mm -hmm. one is, you got to meditate. I meditate three times a day. I meditate on the 23rd Psalm three times a day. And so what I do is that's my measurable activities. When I work with teams, I go, don't look at the scoreboard, do the process. The scoreboard will take care of itself. That's just a bunch of blinking lights up there. And so two ways I'd answer it. I like the 90 day goal and I like goals of measurable activities. This is what I'm going to do today. And by the way, y'all are my GMAs today. But so we get in there and we write out and say, here's what I'm going to do. And then I prioritize it. You know, I prioritize them. The Australians were down under when it came to yachting, the American Cup. They were bad. So what they did is they got in, a, in a groups of two, three times daily since the announcer talking through the race, the process. They were last place every time they did. They won it. So they interviewed the captain, said, you shocked when you won. He said, we already won this thing 5,000 times. We listened three times a day for four years. No, no, no big thing. So you've got to get involved with your day. I like daily goals. But you're right. After three months anymore, it doesn't matter. It's the world's going too fast. So I like 90 day, and then I like doing my goals and measure back to which I call nitty gritty goals, and stay on it. You guys are doing good today. I love that. TK, you're muted. Man, I thought my boy was Millie Vanilli for a minute. 
Like, it's really been there, bro. I said, man, I'm going to put TK lip syncing up in here. <laughs> hey, I, I love how you put that. You know, um, Scott Adams is, is, is known for saying goals are for losers. And I think what he means by goals is exactly what you said about results. Like, I got to lose 30 pounds. I got to finish a book because you spend most of your time in a space of not being there yet. And, and that's pretty demoralized. And, and, and what, what you're calling goals is what he calls a system, you know, which is more about getting into a rhythm that will lead to more results, but that allow you to feel successful right now. Because, because mm-hmm. you, need to feel, you need to feel like you're accumulating wins in the process as opposed to I'm about to go on a, a, a five-year journey and I only get to feel like I'm making progress at the end of the five-year journey. And what you're saying is something that we get to feel progress along the way. Is that, am I understanding it right? You're exactly right on, TK. Mindfulness, let's be in today. I you know, W-I-N, what's important now? Be where your feet are. And then you feel like you're making progress in the day. And we're, we, we keep, TK, we, we, we're so running in the future, we're missing the now. Or we're in the past. I tell people, look, if you're angry all the time, you're, you're in yesterday. If you're anxious all the time, you're in tomorrow. Be in today. You know, take it in. And and I think when you look and say, here's what I got done today, that'll energize you. You know, that'll get you going. But if you keep on going for five years, and that's why when I work with teams or companies, I have 90 days. And it kind of works in football, too. and works in sport. You know, we got the 90 days when we start the season. We got 90 days preseason. And I just like doing it. Let's just stay in 90. But the big thing is, right, you're saying, right, the system, stay in today. Write out what you've got to do today. Stay in there. I had to do it today. I'm, 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 I've got all this stuff in front of me. I got up and did a, a conference call for a company. I guess in front of me, I just I shut my eyes for a minute, said a prayer for a minute. I said, okay, Kevin, let's just get our nitty gritty. Let's get into what we got to do today, what we got to get done, and let's prioritize it. And I think that we can do what you're saying. We're getting so caught up. We never feel we get there. And then you get to judging yourself, and you go, man, I'm not making any progress. Stay in today. Do your daily nitty gritty. And then the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, I love that. So one of my philosophies is that you don't need to force yourself to talk positive. You just need to talk in a direction that moves you forward. Right. So if you had a bad game, you don't need to sit there and be like, oh, we played great today. It was an awesome game. You can actually talk negative and say we played like crap today. But here's what we got to do to get better. Right. And and so I I believe it's about talking in a way that moves you forward. Here's my question for you. What are some specific adjustments we can make in our language to start talking in a way that moves us forward? Because I know when you say the language of winning, you don't mean pretend like you're happy when you're not pretend like you had a 30 point Mm -hmm. game when you really fouled out in the first quarter. I know you mean going forward, but what are some power phrases we can adopt, some changes we can make that can actually get us on that track? Live in vision, don't live in circumstance. That's the first one. Live in vision, don't live in circumstance. Stay, what circumstance? I just played a good game. I just played a bad game. That's circumstance. I can't do anything about that. That's done. But now we live in vision. And what I talk about, and I got this book out, Believing a Sing, and the first thing we talk about is Enterprise Alabama, grown cotton. Bo Weevil comes in and wipes out of cotton. Takes it all. So this is a brand new crop called the peanut. Let's plant it. It's 1910. They planted to become wealthy from the peanut. If you go to Enterprise today in the middle of the town, it's a big statue of a bug. Caption, thank you, Mr. Bo Weevil, for the role you play in our prosperity. First one I would say is this one. Live in vision. No matter what's going to stay in the vision. Don't go into circumstance. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to keep on doing this. Look, your brain, all of us on this today, is extremely creative. It's running all the time. Your imagination goes all the time. If you don't gain, gain, grab control of your imagination, it'll, it'll grab control of you and put you in a grave. And so you want to say, okay, how did, what you guys are doing here? Somebody got together. This, this, is, a, this is a creative gift right here, what, what you're doing. Someone sat and goes, I got a vision. Now let's execute it because a vision without execution is hallucination. So I've got to say, let's execute it. And so one of the phrases I love is basically this. Live in vision, don't live in circumstance. And you know what my bomb is. So what now what? And what's so what now what? Let, let me go into so what now what. 
man, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up on my, I'm sitting up on my porch, man. Just, I'm chilling, right? And when I chill, let me share what I do. I just play my harmonica, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> my heart, man. play my guitar, a little sweet home, right? Ron Rivera calls me, right? I said, uh, what's up, man? He said, you read about me? I said, um, what, did you took over that football team having that chaos up there? Or uh, did you have cancer last week? He said, I got an old friend. I'm the old friend, I guess. Said, nothing happens to me, everything happens for me. I said, man, let me get this right. Your brother died of cancer a few years back. Your house burnt down in Charlotte. They fired you last year. Now you got a team. They, it's all kind of chaos. And then after that, you get cancer, you gonna try to tell me it happened for you? You taught me that. He said, I'm gonna learn how to love deeper. You know, I'm gonna spend time on what matters. I'm appreciate every day. I'm gonna love my family better. So one thing I say, TK, no matter what happens to me, that happened for me. And you gotta believe there's a plan for your life. And then you look back and go, man, that was somehow stacked in my favor. I didn't know it then. And what happened to me, is they carry me on the ambulance one day. Look, man, y'all young bloods, but I hope every one of you have your life taken from you and given back. It changed everything, changed everything. So how that happen, what that do for me? There's this country west, there was a baseball pitcher, Tug McGraw, pitched for the Mets, came up this phrase, you gotta believe. They trade him to the Philadelphia Phillies to ask him, what do you like better, AstroTurf or grass? He said, I don't know. I ain't never smoked AstroTurf. <laughs> So that guy passed away, that baseball pitcher. A song came over the death of his son, who was a singer, country singer. And that's my dad. About a guy who had a bad x-ray, which his friend said, it's over. What you do, you realize this. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mount climbing. I went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. Man, I love deeper. I spoke sweeter. I gave forgiveness I've been denying. When something happens to you, say this to yourself. So what? We can get that in a minute. But that happened for me. I don't know how. I don't know how that door closing. I don't know how that offense. I don't know, but somehow this is going to happen for me. And that's what Ron was saying. That's what taught me. So let's do so what? I go on to tell Ron, I go, Ron, I read a study where this woman got cancer. And she didn't pay attention to her chemo. She did it. She didn't pay attention to radiation. She paid attention to her daily walks, her movies, and her 630 martini. What we don't understand is being a success is almost as much as learning how to ignore things. We got to learn how not to pay attention to things. And there's a lot of research starting to say that you've got to train your mind on what not to pay attention to. I don't even notice that. I don't know about you guys, but I got a crazy family. And we had a family reunion a summer before last. I thought it was the bar scene from Star Wars. <laughs> And look, man, if you if y'all don't have crazy family, if you don't have a crazy family member, you might be the crazy family member. I'm just saying. So I walked in and said, look, I ain't going to get offended. Whatever they say, I'm going to pay attention to what I need to pay attention to. Um, and it was good. So sometimes you got to say, you're like, look, I, and I, and I don't even notice that. I tell people, man, let go. You need to be right. Just let some of that go. If I'm traveling, somebody say something rude. I go, Kevin, just let that small negative happen so you get the big positive things. So I was trying to teach Ron, so what means I ain't got no energy for that. So what? I don't have an opinion about that. I, 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 because anytime I walk with an athlete, gentleman, that played a good game, I said, what were you thinking? I wasn't, man. My mind was quiet. I, I, I don't, I like playing, I like having my players doing this. Trust with no judgment. Play with trust without judgment. You know, it's it, it, like my mind. Sometimes you got to say, so what to stuff? I work for these guys called TNT Fireworks on the phone with them this morning. They send a jet in to pick me up. I go, they, they pick me up in Atlanta to take me up in uh, Florence, Alabama, last time I was there. I try to get on the plane. This guy said, man, how much you weigh? The pilot. So why you asked me that? He said, we need to know how much fuel to put in a plane. I said, fill it up. Man, come on, give me that nozzle. I got this. Come on. <laughs> I sit down on a plane and there's other people on there already. They go, you think everybody told the truth about their weight? I said, man, I'm off this plane. But if I stay on the plane and we hit turbulence, I gotta say, so what? I can't respond to that. I can't do nothing about that. 
you get so you got to learn to say so what now what okay this door's closed how do i go forward what do i go different what's the next opportunity what's what's coming my way so so what now what that's my power phrase that's the language like i said in my in my book i do believing and seeing everything i do i just hit that bad boy cuz look listen you guys we're all going to hit something this whole year's been this way we're going to mm. all get taken down somehow resiliency i keep on coming back got to keep on coming back and so by doing it you get so what now what that's the resiliency phrase it means i'm going to come back from a setback i got to be the comeback kid and when you speak it you got to understand something you got to understand something, fellas. Events don't make you quit. How you talk to you about the event does. And so my big phrase is, so what, now what? That happened for me. Live in vision, don't live in circumstance. Those are my paraphrases. Doc, you know, as a young man who has high ambitions, who has lofty goals, who is trying to um, go and change the world, put my own stamp on it. I have idols. I have people like Kobe Bryant of, you know, who, who, who just achieved at such a high level, um, and, and, and just got so much done in, in the time that he was on this earth. And then I also look at people in business, right? Like the Jeff Bezos or, you know, um, the Steve jobs of the world. And, and I really just admire the, like how they were able to focus with just levels of intensity that 99% of the population will never reach. Right. And I think, I think to myself, you know, when I'm going throughout my day-to-day -day work and I feel so busy, like there's so much stuff that I'm involved in so many, um, hand, so many pots that I have my hand in and so many things I'm contributing to. And at the end of the day, I, I just, I feel really tired. I'm like, God, this is such like a busy day. Like how, how, how am I maintaining this level of busyness? And, you know, something inside of me, you know, whether it's my intuition or just some internal guidance tells me that like, I need to get clearer. I need more clarity. I need to focus. And then I look up at the idols like Kobe, like how, how do they focus at that level? I mean, the, they have the whole world trying to crowd them. And how, how are they able to maintain that level of mental clarity and reduce the clutter? And I know you talk about that in one of your workshops. So I would love just some pointers on, you know, how do you reduce the clutter in a world that so much is being thrown at you on a regular basis? I, you know, the clutter is such a big issue. And when you talk to somebody that does greatness, like the people you're saying, there's not a lot of things going on. People to ask me, about some of the people I work with that are um, big time achievers. And they're not overly fascinating because their mind is just locked in on Kobe and just in performing, you know, Nick Saban. I'm, I'm down with, I'm, at, I'm with Alabama and it was a day after the election last time. And someone comes up to Saban and says, what do you think about the new president? He said, who is it? <laughs> so you, you didn't even watch? No, who is it? When did it happen? I go, yesterday, the, pres the new president was elected. He goes, no, who is it? I go, he said, Trump's all. And he goes right back to work. And those kind of people, their, their mind is right there and they're able to set boundaries. And I think one of the things that we all have to come over overcome, me, is the word no. I mean, the word focus means, and, and this is a Steve Jobs phrase, the word focus means saying no. And because every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And you almost want to get to a point where you're saying, these are things I'm going to say no to and get comfortable. And if you go, if I go to somebody, if I go to TK and he asks me to do something, if I say yes, I don't have to explain. So if I say no, I shouldn't have to explain. And our time is our greatest coin. So to it, what I would try to do is say, okay, what is one thing I can do that will make a difference in my life? What's the one thing we, you know, we all have a gift, but we act like we have any gift under the sun. No, this is our gift. Use your gift, develop your gift, serve the world with your gift. And if that's your gift, take all your energy, take all your time and focus it on that and pay attention to that. So when you do your, we call nitty gritty goals, just ask yourself, as I rank all these priorities, 
how is this what I'm doing right here using my gifts, bettering my world, bettering the world that I'm touching and just stay on number one. And after you get to that, go to number two, but don't leave it till you're done. And what I do with that tarot, I do the same thing. I said, man, I'm terrible. It's a good tarot. I'm exhausted, but it's a good one. But mental clutter is me paying attention to anything other than my vision and my process and get your head quiet. And we have to learn to say, no, I mean, I'm look, I'm not teaching you this. I got to teach me this. You know, somebody will get saved to say happy birthday to my uncle. Come on, bro. Yeah, I'm going to tell Saban, hey, don't worry about getting ready for Ole Miss, man. Somebody got an uncle over there, Uncle Johnny, man. He's like 73, and he wants you to say happy birthday. Come on. And so I got to go back to them and say, that's not what this is about. And, you know, you've got to go forward. And when you do that, you have some haters drinking on Haterade. But you want to say, what I'm doing, this is what I want. These are my gifts. And the other thing I'm going to say to all of us is we need to learn how to Sabbath. We learn how to say, I got to stop and do nothing. Because, like, this Sunday – I had people ask me to do stuff, so I did a couple of those. I didn't say no, and I go, man, I ain't ready to go, and now it's Monday. So we need to Sabbath. We need to meditate. We need to take our time. But what I would say to you is ask yourself, man, what's, what, what's in my heart? What, what's my gift? What, what was the gift I was given? How can I spend time developing it? How can I serve the world with it? And then we got boundaries is a strong thing, setting up boundaries. It's, it's strong. We got to teach people no. Dr. Kevin, I want to use the last, like maybe about five minutes of our time. I want to go through some of your tweets because I went down your timeline and I like to just kind of look at some of the quotes and, and ideas you share. And I, and I just want to show a tweet and have you riff on it for like, you know, 30, 45 seconds each tweet. You ready for a shotgun, shotgun round on yeah, that? That'll be fun. That'll be fun. All, right. All right. So. Let's get some going. All right. Everyone wants to eat, but few are willing to hunt. You know, when you when you want something, there's something you have to give up. Doesn't matter what you want. What do you want to give up to get it? And you, everybody says, hey, I want. That's fine. I was jogging through my neighborhood and this guy said, man, you look good. I said, yeah, I'm a vegan now. He goes, well, I don't want to give up beer. I go, it's that, that phrase. You, you, want, you want things in your life. Everybody's interested. Few are committed. It's TK. It's not what do you want, what you want to give up to get it. Mm, powerful. All right, next tweet. Kindness towards others makes them kind. We're missing kindness anymore. We're missing it. I, 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 I think it's, I talk to my kids about it. And when I go out to see my uh, daughter, she's out in California. First thing I do, bro, we go find somebody. We walk down the street, somebody's homeless. I act like I drop money because I do. I, I drop money out my wallet, and I go, "Hey, man, you, you drop that." And it's the same thing. Hate can cause people to hate. We're connected to each other. We're all connected. We're all part of the body. That's why we gotta learn how to love one another, and be kind to one another. But let me tell you the thing: it's real easy for me to to love and be kind to somebody in my political affiliation or is with my religion. All right, because now that's almost natural. Go go love somebody and be kind. It isn't those things. And it ain't a feeling, it's a choice. So if I'm kind to you, we have what's called mirror neurons. We want to mirror it back. I tell every day, here's a, here, here, here's an Elko phrase. I ain't looking for blessings to come to my life. I just like to be a blessing in somebody's life. And watch, that's what to do. Don't be it back. All right, my next tweet. This is fire. This is so fire. All right. It's always too soon to quit. Quitting is a feeling. Quitting is a <clears> feeling. <throat> and there's a big difference between it's it's late and it's too late. But quitting is a feeling. And to keep on going, it's a choice. Let, let me tell you guys something. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. He was leading a, a march for the protesters of sanitation workers. Y'all know that that march happened the next day? You know who led it? Coretta Scott King, his wife. You think she felt like it? She goes, man, I, I know it's late, but I ain't quitting. I'm going to complete this. It wasn't a feeling. It was a choice. And so we feel like quitting. We stop. But look, if we talked about faith. You can't say you got it. You got to go show it. She went and said, even though this happened, 
to someone I love more than anything in the world. Let me show you I still got faith in man. I still want to show you that we're going to get this done. And what she said was, it ain't too late for me to quit. We're going to finish this. Never quit. Listen, and what you guys are building right here is spectacular. Y'all got me fired up. And you will, you will be blessed if you never quit. There was a study done at Harvard. Back to some of your questions earlier. And it's called now the Harvard 49-year study. And they gave him a treadmill test at Harvard, a 10-minute treadmill test. It was undoable physiologically. And you know there was two groups, those who didn't quit and those who did. Number one factor, the ones who didn't quit were your big, biggest success in life. So you always hear Will Smith say one thing. I think he knows that study. I never come off the treadmill. I never, and he's talking about that study. Don't come off. Listen, you guys, because what y'all is doing is unbelievable. I see your heart. I see how you're touching people. Don't quit. Now, let me tell you something. If you're doing good out there, you're going to get attacked. If you do good, they're going to be energy trying to discourage you because that energy knows where you're headed. It's going to try to stop you. So once you get attacked, you get together and say, that's what he was talking about. There's that attack. But, you know, if you do not grow weary, you will reap in due season if you faint not. Come on, turn up. So you got to say, <laughs> in my season, man, I ain't, ain't going to get weary. It's a choice. And what Credit Scott King did was she touched us. Says, Look, man, am I weary? Yeah, but I, ain't, I will not faint here. We're going to get this done. She, she was saying thing right, right there. The enemy ain't going to stop me on this one. It's a choice. Keep choosing it and you'll be blessed. All right, I'm going to go with one last one. Either you run the day or the day runs you. Now we're back to nitty gritty, man. Now we're all the way in the nitty gritty. Look, you got to get out. And this is to the question. You got to get out and say, look, here's what I'm going to do today. Here's where I'm headed. Here's exactly what I want to get out of this day. If not, you'll just be you'll just be prisoner to all this stuff, the clutter coming. So you got to come out and say, this is what I'm going to do today. Here's how I'm going to run the day. Here's what's going to happen. So you don't get done the day and say, it's okay to say I'm tired. But I'm tired. I get nothing done. I'm tired. I didn't bless nobody. I'm tired. I didn't make a difference in nobody's life. No, I'm tired. But I made a difference. It's a whole different feeling. So if you get up and do what we talked about earlier in these nitty gritties, then you run the day. And you get a feeling of I got something done today at the end. Dr. Kevin, you dropped a lot of gems on this episode. I'm so glad you stuck with us, man, through the technical difficulties. I'm so glad you uh, you shared your time, shared your story. We got to have you back again in the future, man. This episode was fire. We really appreciate you. I come in a minute. Let me tell you something. You guys did a fabulous job. You were well worth the wait. Let me tell you what you guys are doing. I ain't looking for blessings to come in my life. I'm looking to be a blessing in somebody's life. You're going out and blessing people. Don't you stop. Don't you quit. You keep your focus and you keep on going. Because what you guys are doing right here and make a difference in this world, make no bone about it. And I appreciate y'all using me as a blessing and being part of what you're doing. I'll come back in a minute. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Kevin. You're the man. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. For those of you who are tuning in, you can follow Dr. Elko at Dr. Kevin Elko on Twitter. And uh, you can tune in tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time for an edition of TK's Two Cents. We are here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 12 p.m. Revolution of One live streams. Peace out, everybody. Create a great week.